In this lecture in LearnPiezo.org, we're going to talk about some figures of merit of piezoelectric actuators. And those figures of merit are the blocking force, and they're going to be free displacement. Now, a blocking force is defined as that force uh, which is exhibited on the outside for a piezoelectric material uh, to be completely constrained. And free displacement uh, is that displacement which occurs when you have no external forces or stresses on the piezoelectric material. So free displacement is pretty easy to understand, and we're going to be using the K31 type, K33 type uh rod to explain these concepts, but they equally to equally apply uh, to other uh, types of piezoelectric uh, geometries. So if you have a polarization like vector like that, and then we supply an electric field, some positive voltage, some negative voltage, we have a length here, and let's say the voltage applied is V. <coughs> the electric field is V over L. And we already know from our equation previously that E times D equals the strain. And <coughs> we know that strain <coughs> is equal to delta L over L. Therefore, strain multiplied by L equals delta L, uh, which then we can understand as E times D times uh, E times D times L equals the free displacement <clears throat> and I'm just gonna call that FD for lack of or uh, displacement well I'll call that DF free displacement as DF so this here calculates the free displacement uh, for this piezoelectric material and normally if we're looking at this as an actuator Meaning, we're looking at the microscopic, sorry, the macroscopic perspective. We wouldn't use electric field because, you know, when you're applying a voltage either from a function generator or whatever voltage source you're using, you're applying voltage. You're not applying electric field sort of directly. <coughs> so, what you will probably have uh, in your definition here would be V divided by L times D times L equals uh, the free displacement, which I'm just going to call DF. And this obviously can be written as V times the D equals DF, which is a free displacement. So for this piezoelectric material used in, as an actuator, the free displacement is equal to V, the voltage applied, <coughs> times D, <coughs> which is the uh, piezoelectric D coefficient, namely the 3, 3 coefficient. And again, here we're discussing free displacement. So now let me let's take another case. Let's say we have a different type of material. Let's say we have a multi-layer material, uh, and each of these segments are polarized uh, again in the same direction. You take the, each of these materials. So for this material, we're going to apply a positive, and this side we're going to apply a negative. Or actually, we're going to have to do it like this. This is going to have to go this way. Therefore, we apply negative here and positive here. Therefore, and these are these are electrodes right here. So these are the electrodes. This way, when we apply a positive voltage, or rather, when we apply a positive voltage, this thing will shrink because this electric field is going. Uh, I'm going to draw electric field in green. The electric field is pointing this way, so therefore this segment is going to shrink. In this case, the electric field is going that way. <coughs> therefore, this segment is going to shrink. And the electric field is going that way. Therefore, this segment is going to shrink. So this is a multi-layer material with three sections. And I have applied the electric voltage such that, um, hey, you're going to get shrinkage or contraction altogether. So, again, now let's assume this total length is L. So we had our equation earlier as 
the uh, strain in the material is equal to the electric field times the d coefficient. Now the electric field, let's the voltage we're applying is still v. You know we're applying v uh, difference of potential from the negative voltage, so it's still v. But now we're going to have L over 3. Since now the segment has divided into 3, so it should have a larger electric field times D equals the strain. And we know that strain is equal to the L over L, which would then allow us to write this equation delta L, which, which I'm going to write as DF, for lack of a better uh, nice notation. We're going to take this L to the other side you know, over here. <coughs> uh, from that, uh, we can cancel it. So it'll be V divided by 3 times D. <coughs> Sorry, it's not divided. Um, v times 3 because it, because the uh, 3 goes to the numerator. Uh, so therefore, in the first case where we had a single material, we had VD equals DF. So this is for the single layer, and we're going to write this one for the multi-layer, and then times 3. So you see the free displacement for a multi-layer uh, material for a given voltage is at higher. So this is the free displacement calculations, which I just did. And these concepts are also extendable to other piezoelectric actuators with um, uh, other piezoelectric actuators with uh, how do you say uh, uh, with displacement characteristics <clears throat> so you don't put any force on the tip uh, let's say you have an actuator like this and you have some other you know you have a supporting structure here so this is our piezoelectric actuator this is our supporting structure we have like a, a type of a fulcrum here and the piezoelectric material expands and then it pushes the fulcrum up right It'll push this up and this will turn like this, right? So you can say the free displacement with regards to this position, with regards to the voltage applied here. So <coughs> these terms are fairly general. Wherever you're defining the displacement, <coughs> you, you can define your free displacement according to the voltage applied to the piezo to the displacement uh, resulting in, another, in a different portion uh, of the device, depending on what kind of uh, other... Uh, structures you've attached to your piezoelectric element. So basically we're measuring the displacement here. Okay. Or actually we're, we're measuring yeah, the displacement there. So let's go on to the next uh, portion. And this is called blocking force and I introduced it second because it, you know, well, you got to think about it a little bit more. Blocking force. Now what is blocking force? And I'm going to just type that out for you. Blocking. So when we apply an electric field to a piezo electric material, it wants to expand. The blocking force. Okay. Uh, the blocking force is that force needed to completely constrain the material or the actuator for that matter <clears throat> so what do I mean here we had this piezoelectric actuator here which is a single PZT plate or piezoelectric plate we applied some voltage to it, positive, negative, and it wants to expand. Uh, the electric field applied over it equals the voltage divided by the length. <coughs> its free displacement is equal to voltage times the D coefficient. Sorry, this should be D here. Voltage times the D coefficient. That's the DF, free displacement. Uh, but what is the blocking force? <coughs> the blocking force is that force needed to constrain this. So imagine if you had this piezoelectric material and you put a big block on top of it. 
Now once you put this block on top of this piezoelectric material, it crunches down. So instead of being like this, it's going to be like half the side, let's say. Um, this is exaggeration, so this is the piezo, this is that big block that we set on it. So it actually displaced uh, that piezoelectric element. It made it smaller, basically, by this compressive force, you know, mass times gravity. This compressive force. So basically, the blocking force uh, is that force uh, generated in the piezoelectric material. <coughs> it's going to be, basically, uh, the blocking force is going to be equivalent to the ma uh, to the weight, so this is mass times gravity. That's weight. Newtons are newtons. Would be that weight, which would be newtons, which would, uh, which would cause the piezoelectric material to return to exactly the same position. So here we have it a better in a better picture. We have our piezoelectric actuator here. This is a diagram. We have df here. <coughs> and we have blocking force, which I'm just going to call FB. I said that for the for the single piezoelectric material, voltage times the piezoelectric D coefficient is the free displacement, which is going to be here. Right? So, uh, if we have that piezoelectric material, and then we put another, ma and we put a mass on top of it, let's say, that that block that uh force that free displacement is not going to be less right because you put a force on it therefore when it wants to expand it's not going to expand to the exact same position so we're going to have a reduced free displacement once you put that mass on there but however there is now a force resulting from mass times gravity or perhaps you can just choose any other type of way to put a force on a material you know either just a spring or there's some type of pushing force or you're pushing on it with your hand or you're pushing on it with something else another actuator maybe so there's an, there's actually a force that was developed in this material because of that blocking force so there's actually a, a stress in the material see when you have d e in the strain here there's stress either we call stress capital X or we can call stress T or sometimes they call stress sigma the stress is zero because the piezoelectric material is under a non-stress condition there's no external <coughs> pushing forces so basically by applying this electric field you change the natural state of the piezoelectric material um, wanting it to go to a free stress condition so we're not applying any external stresses um, the piezoelectric material expands to that non-stress state. However, that now that you have put this uh, big